Hey everybody, welcome to the introductory video for my brand new system, a Fenwall 3220 fire suppression system. So, just to put this out here, this is a purely uh, explanatory video. I'm putting out another video at the exact same time that I publish this video, I'm going to be filming it directly afterwards, where I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, preliminary test of this system. Keep in mind that at no point during this video am I actually going to activate the system, I'm just going to go into a detailed explanation of how it works. So I'm going to put the link in the description to the testing video um, if you're looking for more interesting stuff and actually seeing this system in operation and things going off. Uh, however, if you're interested in how this system works and you want to get a good idea of what's going on before you watch the testing video, I highly recommend you uh, watch this this video you're currently watching because I'm going to do an in-depth uh, explanation of how the system is wired, how it operates, how it's programmed, and how fire suppression systems operate in general. So let's go ahead and get started. So at the center of this system is my new Fenwall 3220 uh, main control panel. And um, if you're going to watch the testing video after this video, uh, I'm going to go back over some of these same things, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, but like I said, I'm going to do much more in-depth in this video, and I'll kind of explain some other things so that the testing video will still make sense on its own if you haven't watched this video. So on the interior of this panel, we have the main circuit board. Um, it's got an LCD display. Now this panel is uh, in a way kind of networkable. You can purchase remote display and remote hazard units that you can connect by, uh, via these RS-485 channels. And uh, basically that allows you to create a much larger system with multiple rooms protected by these fire suppression systems and multiple hazards without having to spend money on an individual panel for every system. And so um, it also allows all of those systems to be controlled by one centralized location. But in the case of my system, I'm just using this panel on its own. Um, so it's got uh, two detection zones in addition to an abort zone and a manual release zone. Uh, also has a zone uh, for a supervisory device and water flow device if you want to connect this to a sprinkler system, for example, if you're using it for like a deluge pre-action system. Uh, it currently has eight auxiliary relays installed. Five of them are uh, on an optional relay board. These are all programmable over here. Then there's uh, two other relays under there. One is for an alarm and trouble. And then there's a third programmable relay, which I'm currently using as part of the uh, NAC circuit. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, it has two release outputs that you see up here. I have them both uh, cut out with a dummy resistor um, because I do not have a releasing device currently. Uh, it also has an output for a stop valve if you're using a larger system with a manifold for multiple uh, CO2 canisters or something like that. And then finally we have the two sounder circuits. So I'll come back to this panel later, but for now we're going to take a look at the devices that are installed on the board. So starting off, we have the two pull stations that are connected to the manual release circuit. Over on the left side right here, this is a Fenwall model 29-320000-287. And then over on the right side here, this newer looking one, this is a 29-320000-280. These are both rebranded FCI uh, MS2 pull stations. And they're very similar on the exterior. The only difference in the uh, model number is that the uh, dash 280 pull station right here, this has the uh, terminal block on the back of it. Meanwhile, the uh, 287 uh, over on the other side, that has pigtail leads on the switch. Other than that, they're uh, very functionally similar. As I mentioned, these are connected to the manual release output, which is uh, configured in the panel to have no delay. So activating these pull stations would immediately cause a uh, release of the fire suppression agent. Moving up from the pull stations, we have this Halon abort switch. Now I know that this is a Fenwall model because it has their logo stamped on the back of it. However, there's no model number that goes along with this. There's a model number for the uh, Square D switch that's on the front, but that's about it. Um, 
And so the switch assembly on the back of this is actually rather large, which is why even though it's a uh, single gang plate, it has to be mounted on a 4-inch box with the uh, single gang adapter. So this is wired into the abort circuit, and essentially what this does is uh, prevents the fire suppression agent from being discharged if the button is held down. Now there's several different modes you can select. For my panel, it's set on abort mode 2, which means that if you activate the switch, it will immediately pause the delay timer and will reset it to the original time. Now for my system, the delay timer is set for 30 seconds. So activating this button even momentarily will automatically reset the timer back to 30 seconds. If you continue to hold in the button, it will keep the timer paused, and then if you were to release it, um, that's when the timer would begin again. This mode also allows the switch to be activated multiple times. So for example, if somebody activated the switch, then the timer began to run down, and you can see the timer from the uh, LCD display on the panel and then somebody went and activated it again, it would continue to reset itself back to 30 seconds on the timer. Now to completely prevent the system from discharging if there was a, uh, you know, a false activation of the smoke detectors, this button would have to be held down and the timer stopped while the panel was reset and that would finally clear the alarms on the panel and prevent the agent from discharging. So the detection zones on this panel are comprised of these four Fenwall smoke detectors. If you watch that new fire alarm devices video from May of 2017, you kind of got a uh, preview of these. The detectors that are over on this row, these two detectors, these are connected to detector zone 1. Meanwhile, the detectors over here are connected to de the um, detector zone 2. So the bottom two detectors, these are both ionization. Um, both of these are model CPD-7051 and they're connected to the standard uh, Fenwall two-wire base. These do have the magnetic test on them, which is really nice. The top two detectors, these are both photoelectric models. Over here, this is a uh, what they call an advanced model. This is a PSD-7157. Over here, this is the uh, standard model for the photoelectric detectors. This is a PSD-7155. And uh, again, those are both connected to the two wire bases. So essentially how these two cir circuits work, it's connected for uh, cross zone detection, which means that both of these zones have to go into alarm in order to begin the uh, pre-discharge countdown and then eventually lead to the agent discharging. It doesn't matter which of the detectors on either zone activates, and uh, even if both detectors on one zone would activate, it still would not cause the alarm to move into the pre-discharge stage. Um, neither of these two zones have priority over each other, so it doesn't matter which zone activates first. Um, the only thing that's important is that they're both in alarm. Um, and so now we'll move on to the notification appliances, which will uh, enunciate basically which stage the panel is currently in. Up on the top of the board we have three Fenwall notification appliances. Uh, all three of these are rebranded Wheelock models. So the horn strobe on the far left, this is a 75-00015-002. Um, this is basically a rebranded version of the newer style horizontal strobe Wheelock MTs. Um, the horn in the middle is a 75-00010-001. And uh, this is basically, as you can see, a rebranded Wheelock MT-1224. Finally, the uh, strobe all the way over on the far right is a 75-00002-013. And this, as you can see, is a rebranded Wheelock RSS with the custom agent lettering. So, the horn strobe right here, this is set um, on the back of the device on broadband horn. Um, and then it will be coded to the panel, you know, throughout the various stages to different coding options. The horn in the middle is set to the uh, electronic bell, and then uh, obviously the strobe over on the far left is uh, coded to continuous. So how this system will operate when it goes into alarm is um, in the first stage, which is general alarm, just means that one of the two zones, um, smoke detector zones, has gone into alarm. 
only the horn in the middle will activate and it'll be sounding uh, electronic bell in code 3. If you've seen uh, any pictures of older fire suppression systems, uh, even my other fire suppression system, my Ansel Autopulse that you see in my system test series, you'll see that traditionally they would have one horn and one bell that would help to differentiate between the different stages that the suppression system was uh, operating in. So basically the idea here is uh, it's set on electronic bell to kind of emulate the old system where there would be, you know, the bell in contrast to the loud broadband horn. Um, when the system enters the second stage, um, which would be the pre-discharge, then the electronic bell will switch um, coding to 120 beats march time, um, and then this horn on the horn strobe will kick in, uh, again sounding at 120 beats march time, and then the two strobes will also fire, um, obviously being coded to continuous. Then finally, when the system discharges, everything will be uh, in steady continuous. And then uh, the strobes are non-silenceable until the agent has stopped releasing. So you may be wondering if this panel only has two um, sounder outputs, how I'm able to control basically these three devices, uh, all different coding options and differently. So now we're going to go back down to the panel and I'll show you what I meant when I talked about that relay being incorporated into the NACs. So if you look at how the horns and the strobes are wired to the board uh, or into the panel, both of the horns are on one sounder circuit, circuit number one, and both of the strobes are wired into sounder circuit number two. That leaves the question of, well, how is the horn in the center allowed to sound on electronic bell while the broadband horn on the horn strobe remains silent. And basically this uh, third programmable relay down here allows that to occur. Now I know there's been, uh, you know, things in the, the fire alarm hobby community, I guess you'd call it, where people have used relays to kind of create a fake uh, extra knack on their panels, and that's not exactly up to code, nor does it offer proper supervision, but um, this configuration of wiring with a relay as it relates to these suppression panels is completely legitimate and um, it has been used out on the field. I actually stole this idea from my autopulse system which uh, if you know my videos was removed completely um, intact from a building so that kind of proves that point that uh, you do see this out in the field. Basically between the two horns the knack wiring runs back to the panel and uh, up to this relay. Now the two wires from the horn are connected to the common and the normally open on the programmable relay. This relay will only close its contacts when uh, the panel has entered the pre-discharge stage. So when the panel is an alarm and it's feeding the um, positive current through the uh, red wire, as you know the panels have the reverse polarity supervision, when it's feeding the positive current through the uh, well, basically what matches up to the positive on the horn strobes, this current cannot flow through this relay because the contacts are not open until the panel reaches the pre-discharge stage. However, when uh, the panel is outputting rever reverse polarity in order to maintain the uh, supervision on the circuits, there's this diode package right here. And this is connected between the normally closed and the normally open contacts on the relay. So when the, uh, the relay is in its uh, normal position, when the panel is not uh, in the pre-discharge or later stage, the common is connected to the normally closed output. Now, as you know, diodes, they're polarity biased, so they will only allow the current to flow in one direction. Basically, this diode allows the supervision circuit to be completed um, past this relay when the panel is in the supervisory condition. Um, by allowing the reverse polarity current to flow through the relay and maintain supervision on the entire circuit. And that's what makes this different from simply hooking the NAC up to the relay, um, is that it does allow the entire circuit to maintain its supervision. So here's the LCD screen of the control panel. Obviously you can see the backlighting is off until you uh, press a key on the panel and uh, light it up. You can see it's displaying one trouble because there is uh, no batteries installed in the system. Um, 
and then you can also see that it's displaying the uh, signal silence light because I've silenced the trouble for the battery. This panel actually has a pretty interesting reset cycle and I'll go ahead and show you that. So when you press the reset key, it'll allow you to select which panel you want to reset. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you can connect multiple hazard units to this panel. So obviously this is the only one in the system, so we'll go ahead and press reset. And you'll see momentarily it completely cuts power to the entire panel. And now you have to press accept. And now we will go ahead and silence the battery low trouble. And you can see the silence function is kind of the same way in which you can select which panel you want to silence the circuits on. And then you have to go ahead and exit this screen. So that wraps it up for the introduction to this system. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm going to go right into the uh, testing video now. So I encourage you to click the link in the description and move on over to that video so you can see this system in action. So thanks for watching.